Now, transmitters and receivers. Um, typical transmitters and receivers. Um, in fact, you're going to be operating this one when you do your practical this, uh, this, um, this afternoon. So um, that's this one here. Um, so you'll get a, a bit of a feel for modern transmitters and receivers. Okay, transmitters generate high frequency or very high frequency or ultra high frequency electrical energy. Um, the generated energy is radiated by an antenna as a electromagnetic wave and we'll go into that in the next module. And the basis of a transmitter is called an oscillator. And all an oscillator is, is something that generates your alternating current, <laughs> so those positive and negative cycles, at the frequency that you want it at. So it's at that specific frequency. And we call that, that, that signal that's generated by that oscillator a carrier. That's just a term we use. It carries, it can carry all sorts of information, and we'll go into that in a sec. Turning the power on and off to an oscillator using a Morse code key can generate what we call continuous wave, or CW. And that's, that's what they used to use for Morse code, and they still use for Morse code, actually. Uh, so, literally, if you've got a power supply, which can be a battery, a Morse key which, which controls the power to the oscillator and then the oscillator to the antenna. That's your simplest transmitter you can ever get. And here's an example <laughs> that I'll show you. And if you trace out the circuit, you'll see that the battery goes through the Morse key to an oscillator and then to an antenna, literally. That's as simple as you can get. So that's great, that's CW, and CW is still, is still used. Uh, in fact, when it, when it became no longer a requirement to get a licence, it became more popular, <laughs> would you believe? <laughs> Don't quite know how that works, but it, anyway. Um, modulation, so what we want to actually do is put a, a voice over those, that, that radio frequency. We call it radio telephony. In the act, it's called radio telephony. It's a bit of a, a, a throwback to the, the past. If we superimpose our voice frequencies, so our really low voice frequencies, onto a carrier wave, so a, a, a radio frequency carrier wave, we call that modulation. Um, if we superimpose the voice frequencies on the onto the amplitude of the carrier so what happens is what we, when we say amplitude what we're talking about is the size of that that carrier wave if we cause the size of that carrier wave to be modulated by our voice so the the, the level of our voice what we say is that's amplitude modulation so it's modulating the amplitude of that wave using our voice. If, if our voice is more stronger, you know, you shout into it, it'll be higher amplitude. If you whisper, it'll be lower amplitude. So, so Sorry, to ask you, that, that's the, the power level effectively of the, of, the, of the wave, is that right? Let me go to the next slide. Sorry, sorry. sorry. No, no, because th th this, this demonstrates it much, much better. You notice the audio voice from our microphone is much lower frequency, so it's down at voice frequencies. It's really, really low frequencies. Whereas the carrier wave from our oscillator is up at you know high frequencies or much higher frequencies. So you'll see it's oscillating much, much quicker, many more waves per second rather than our audio. If you that modulates that, mm -hmm. you end up with something like this. Yep. So what happens is where my voice is much higher you'll notice the amplitude is much greater. Where it's much quieter, amplitude is much quieter. That's actually a good representation of it. That's amplitude modulation. Now, the other way of modulating is if my voice, same voice, same carrier, but what I'm actually doing is, as my voice gets higher, you notice that the, the number of cycles here actually gets more 
So it's actually going up in frequency a little bit. Whereas where my voice goes down, it's actually widening it out or lowering the frequency here. So no, nothing's happening to the amplitude, but what's happening is it's changing the frequency just slightly here and here based on what my voice is doing. This is called frequency modulation. So this is AM, this is FM. That's what it's doing. So it's a, it's a good representation of uh, what the difference, and I always re remember amplitude modulation is this, frequency modulation is this. <laughs> amplitude stays exactly the same, but the frequency changes just slightly, just slightly. So to represent it, here's, here's our, a simplest, the simplest of uh, voice transmitters. You've got a microphone coming in here, your, your voice, so this is the low frequency. You've got an oscillator that's oscillating at the frequency you want it at, very high frequency. Goes into a, ma a marvellous thing called a magic thing called a modulator. <laughs> and what comes out is, in this case, it's an AM transmitter, is uh, the amplitude modulated signal based on your voice. And you, I, could, I could do the same thing here and have a, a, an FM it's just a, a, an FM modulator rather than an AM modulator. <laughs> but the same thing comes out. I have an FM, uh, a frequency modulated signal coming out the other end as well. So, okay, we talk about different forms of amplitude modulation. One of those forms is what we call single sideband. When, when, you, when you combine a whole lot of frequencies together, some audio frequencies and some RF frequencies, you get a whole lot of different frequencies all come out the other end. <laughs> um, and um, single sideband is just a, a way, a, a method of just taking one of those frequencies that you want, a sideband, if you like, frequency, and just transmitting that sideband frequency. So you get rid of the carrier, you get rid of all the other frequencies, and you just transmit that frequency. So that's called a single sideband, and it can be an upper sideband or a lower sideband, which is just one side of the carrier or the other. Um, but uh, a very efficient, very, from a spectrum use point of view, uh, um, very efficient way of actually transmitting your voice. Um, the power transmitted on SSB is the same as AM. It depends on the volume of your voice. And so one of the key things here is the way that you control the, the, the power that you're putting out is by your voice level and, the, and in a transmitter, the way that you control your voice level is what's called a microphone gain control. And what a lot of people do is, I want more power, turn the microphone <laughs> gain control up, full, which causes a whole lot of distortion of your voice and, and nasty things to happen in places you don't want it to happen. <laughs> and all of this sort of stuff. So that's, that's where you can potentially generate harmful interference because what's happening is you're actually generating frequencies outside of the amateur band or outside of your particular part of the band. So, so the microphone gain control is an important one to know about. So, um, <laughs> and <laughs> reiteration of the, uh, the power because people go, oh, 10 watts is nothing. Oh, I need more power. So, um, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> they also cause other problems. So, so, permitted to 10 watts on SSB. What that means is at, at the peak of your voice, so at, the, at the, the highest part of your voice or the loudest part of your voice, if you look at a power meter and it's, and it's peaking on about 10 watts, you're sweet. Uh, if it's going, you know, up to 100 watts, we uh, need to turn a few things back a bit. So, so it's that sort of thing. So, on the loudest volume of your voice, you, you're seeing 10 watts peak envelope power. Because, because your voice is the thing that's determining what you're transmitting, it's the highest part of that, that peak envelope that you're actually measuring, which is at that 10 watt level. With fr um, FM, slightly different because you're not varying the amplitude, you're varying the frequency. So you've got the amplitude there all the time. So as soon as you start transmitting on a, an FM transmitter, and it's, say it's a 10 watt transmitter, as soon as you start transmitting, you're transmitting 10 watts. 
So, um, so it's slightly different. You just need to know that at if you're an FM transmitter, like a handheld or something like that, um, that it's limited to 10 watts. You just um, need to then look at your power meter and go, ah, okay, so that's that's 10 that's 10 watts. I'm within you know my my license conditions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. Um, and the frequency of the carrier changes. Um, and that modulation, if you like, um, is called, in FM, it's called something a little bit different in FM. It's called deviation. So it's frequency deviation. What you're, what you're doing is changing the frequency. High, high voice level, higher frequency, lower voice level, lower frequency and it's deviating the frequency just a little bit within the, the specifications of the uh, transmitter. Okay. Uh, I think I may have covered most of this. Um, yeah, uh, just to emphasize on FM, the more deviation, the greater the bandwidth. If you think about it, if you've got a high voice level and it's deviating the frequency a little bit, it's actually making it higher, so it's taking up a little bit more of the band because it's a higher frequency and a lower frequency. So the deviation, the more deviation, the greater the bandwidth. And particular, the, the way that um, FM transmitters are designed, they are within a particular bandwidth. So, uh, so that's, that's, that, that keeps you within the, the requirements of the LCD and, and that sort of thing. Um, but if you decide then to wind up your microphone gain control up to full, um, potentially what happens is that takes that frequency range outside of what it's designed to do. Um, AM and FM carriers that are over-modulated may cause distorted output, so people can't understand you, but also probably more importantly is uh, maybe interfering and creating frequencies outside of what it's designed for. Um, and may cause harmful interference to amateurs. That's probably not quite so bad, but uh, harmful interference to other radio communication users and services. That's bad. <laughs> so, yeah. Now, um, this is a little bit of extra information, and it, it's just so that we can explain a few other concepts. I showed you a very simple, um, very simple transmitter, a very simple receiver and in fact we've got one here. very simple receiver wow. I'll go that way <coughs> this bit here <laughs> is the receiver side this bit here is the transmitter side so a really simple trans transmitter a really simple receiver which is very similar to what's on that board your antenna now you've got you don't need to know this is foundation licensee, but it's just handy to know this concept. It's a thing called an inductor, which is basically a coil of wire and a capacitor. Now, a capacitor is just a, a, a couple of plates with a, a, some sort of material in the middle that stores charge, a bit like a battery. And this stores charge, um, and this, this um, inductor also stores charge and resists change to to charge we've got a what we call a diode so that you don't need to know this but a diode which is a in effect a demodulator so what it does is take the audio off the rf and just give you audio and it just gives you the audio to your headphones so you can hear it um and the fact that it's got an arrow through the capacitor just means it's a variable capacitor. You can change the capacitance of it. So this is this is as simple as it gets as a receiver. <laughs> um, so, so let me just go on. So the capacitor, variable capacitor, etc. A capacitor stores charge and releases that charge in the form of electric lines of force. Um, so we, we don't need to know that, but it, it stores charge. When you combine a capacitor with an inductor, it's what we call a resonance circuit. And resonance is, is a, as it says here, very special electrical condition and very important for 
radio. It, it, that combination of the L and the C, the, the inductor and the capacitor, at a specific frequency creates a resonant circuit. And what happens is the energy between the inductor and the capacitor sits there and circulates between those two, com two components at a particular frequency. <laughs> So it actually sets the frequency. That's how you can tune a, a crystal set or a receiver to a particular frequency. Um, and that, so that resonance, that resonance is, a, is a, a very special condition that we, uh, we use within radio. And what we refer to is that L and that C are a tuned circuit. And that tuned circuit is at the particular frequency or the resonance that we want it to be at. So that's really handy because we need in a receiver to actually have the receiver receive at a particular frequency, at the frequency that we want them at. Um, and then of course demodulate or take the audio off of the, the, uh, the radio frequency signal that we're, uh, we're receiving at and then amplify the voice signal. So a receiver converts, it does the reverse, exactly the reverse of what a transmitter does. It extracts the voice off of the, the radio frequency signal uh, and then amplifies it and, and lets you hear just the voice. Not the radio, the radio component part of it, but just the voice. So, so and, and uh, in, if it's AM, so if it's an amplitude modulated uh, receiver, uh, what it's doing is demodulating. What we say in FM, so the an FM detector, uh, a demodulator or a detector in AM. In FM, what we call a, a detector is a discriminator. It actually discriminates the voice out of the the FM signal that's being received. Any questions? <laughs> So AM, a detector or a demodulator, and FM, it's a discriminator. That's the, they're the key. You, and so if I say a discriminator, instantly you know, ah, that's FM. We're talking FM here. So a really simple receiver that's a bit more complex than just our crystal set, but is what we call a tuned radio frequency receiver. And you'll notice, <laughs> What we've got here is a inductor and a variable capacitor in a tuned circuit, so very similar to our crystal set. We've got a couple of these, which is why it's called a tuned radio frequency receiver. We've got one of these frequency selection circuits, so it's just a resonant circuit at the frequency that we want to receive it. We boost that up a little bit, so this is a radio frequency amplifier, so we just raise the level of it a little bit, We've got another one of these circuits, which what it's doing is the signal coming in here is everything, <laughs> is the, the whole spectrum. What this does is narrow us down to here. What this does is narrow us down to here. <laughs> so it's getting us narrower and narrower. And, and a great example of this is a lot of crystal receivers, when you made them, you start listening and what you're hearing is three or four AM radio stations all at the same time. And that's because a crystal receiver is a very wide bandwidth receiver. It's receiving the whole ba AM band. Whereas what you're wanting to do is actually tune it down to just the radio station you want it on. So what, that's what this is doing. Then we've got our detector. So in this case, who would like to have a guess as to whether this is an AM or an FM receiver? AM. It's AM because it's a detector, it's not a discriminator. And then we've got, we boost that up a little bit in the audio amplifier and out of the speakers. So tuned radio frequency receiver. There are three things that a receiver needs. And these three things you need to know um, is its sensitivity. Now a sensitivity is its ability to receive really weak signals. It's selectivity, and this is what we were just talking about, 
its ability to actually receive just the frequency you want it on. So its ability to say tune to, you know, 92.2 for triple J, whatever. Um, receiver stability, so it's, its ability for the receiver to stay on the same frequency over long periods of time. This is not terribly much of a, um, uh, not as much of a requirement, I suppose, than the older receivers that used to drift with time and heat. <laughs> you used to have to switch them on and come back in a few, in sort of 10 minutes time once the receiver had warmed up. Uh, not so much of a requirement these days, but the three characteristics of a receiver are sensitivity, selectivity, and stability. And a typical question would be, there are three characteristics of a receiver that include sensitivity and selectivity. What's the third one? And then they would have four things to choose from, one of which would be stability. Now, this is a bit scary, but not as scary as it will appear when we do the practical. There are a few controls that you need to know about on a, on a, a trans, transceiver. Now, when I talk about a transceiver, all that means is it's a transmitter and a receiver in the same box. <laughs> so you can transmit and receive on the same box. Most things are transceivers um, these days. The AF gain control. Now, this is just the level from your speaker. So how loud is it? That's all that is. There is an RF gain control as well. Now, an RF gain control is just a level, but it's, it is actually back here in the receiver. So it's at this sort of level. It's not a, the AF gain control will be here, where it comes out the speaker. The RF gain control is back here in the chain. Now, squelch or mute, if uh, these are usually ma used on um, FM, on FM transceivers, um, if you don't have the squelch on, all you hear is background noise, hiss. Whereas the squelch, you can set the squelch level so that it just takes that out and you've got no signal, no, nothing, no noise until you actually get a signal that it receives and then you hear the sig you just hear the signal. So that's the squelch or mute. Uh, mode is where well, we've been talking about AM and FM and we've been talking about single sideband, so upper sideband or lower sideband. And there's a whole lot of others that just lets you select that. Um, your VFO or your, how you select the frequency. That's all it is. Variable frequency oscillator. You've got a few other things. Um, a receiver incremental tuning. This is where you want to just tune a little bit less than your VFO. It just gives you a little bit of fine tuning. Um, the band, obviously select the band. These are the bands that are available to foundation licensees and you can select those and I will show you how to, how to do that on a, on a, a transceiver. And the carrier level. Now this is the level um, of the, the oscillator that we talk about, the thing that generates the, uh, the, the radio frequency in the first place. And there's usually a, an ability to, let, to set that carrier level. So that's just, that's just a bit about controls. Some questions. Well and truly, frequency modulation. Easy peasy. Now, there may be in the in the exam, a block diagram, oops, sorry, a block diagram, probably won't be this complex, but a block diagram similar to this where they've taken out, let me go back a step, here, block diagram like this, and they've removed the name of one of them. So, and it says, okay, the, this is a FM transmitter or whatever. Uh, what is the you know the the name of the block that's blank? And so you have a you'll probably have all of these plus a few furfies, and one of them will be oscillator, so or, or something like that. So um, 
So the device that generates the carrier in a transmitter is the oscillator. And think about it, oscillator. It's it's the thing that's changing the from positive to negative at the frequency you wanted it. If a generator is over if a transmitter, sorry. If a transmitter is over modulated, it is likely to <laughs> Now, it's probably likely to do all of those. <laughs> <laughs> However, this is the interference and safety thing. <laughs> uh, the ability to, for a receiver to receive really weak signals is called sensitivity, sensitivity well and truly. And superheterodyne is actually a type of receiver, just so you know, so just to throw in a real fair for you there.